So hey everyone, this is me Rachit, and welcome to another video. This is a very special video because this is the season two, I should say, of the God of Challenges Rachit series. And if you if you have seen this in the past, this is a bunch of around seven to eight videos in which um, sometimes God of Challenges me, sometimes I challenge him with some algorithmic problem, and then the other person has to solve it. We also have some funny comments all the way around with a scene of bloopers at the end. So this has been like really loved by the audience so far, and we hope you enjoy this new episode. So if you already don't know Gaurav, uh, he is the guy in the red shirt, obviously, and uh, he has been a phenomenal YouTuber as well as an expert on system designs. Um, he has been working with Uber and Morgan Stanley in the past, and he has left his job to you know pursue his teaching passion. And he is the founder of Interview Ready. With that, Gaurav, how's it going? Thanks, that's it. Yeah, that's a that's a. Our intros are getting longer and longer every day. You know, I think we are we are doing pretty well then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, good. after after a couple of more years of experience, probably it would sound something like how Khaleesi used to introduce herself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, breaker of change. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we have n towels, right? And these okay. are like points in space. So each of them has a x and a y coordinate. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing about these towers is that uh, on this Euclidean space, they can actually burn. So I can set a tower on fire. Another thing is, uh, if the two towers are proximate, I mean, if the two towers are close enough to each other, they set mm -hmm. each other a light also. So the way that happens is if you are within a proximity of P of I, mm -hmm. if you are within this distance, then I will set you a light. Okay, if I am burning and you are within this distance, I'm going to set you also on fire. So what's going okay. to happen eventually is that I want all the towers, the all the end towers, to be burned. Okay. And you need to tell me how many ways do I have to set these towers on fire. So if I put the towers in an array of zeros and ones, okay, whether right. I set it on fire or not set it on fire, then you need to tell me the total number of ways that this binary number can be made. Okay, that's got it. That's basically yeah. So basically, if I got the question correct, there are n towers, and what is the limit of n first of all? So n is something like uh, ten raised to the power three. I see. It's a small number. I see. Okay, so basically, you are saying we have up to thousand towers, and um, if I'm burning ith tower, then all the towers which are which are in the range of p of i, they yeah. are they they will also get burnt, and yes. our end goal so is to burn all tower. the towers. Exactly, burn one tower. This guy also gets burnt, and if this person is also within the distance of p of i, this also starts burning. So okay. essentially, it's a it's a cascading effect. Everything will Got start it. getting burnt. But yeah, if this is greater than distance pi, then it doesn't burn. So you have to manually go and start it over here. Okay. In this but, but for every tower, they have their separate p of i, right? So it might happen that burning ith tower leads to burning the jth tower, but the vice versa is not true because p of j okay. might be really less because of which if you burn the jth tower, still the ith tower is. You know, far away from the JS tower. Yeah, yeah. So this is, let's say, this is a huge tower, a big tower, and these are really small towers. So for this thing to burn anybody near it, it has a radius of ten, while this has a radius of twenty. So if I burn this tower, both towers burn. But Got if it. I burn this tower, only this tower burns. Got it. Basically, yeah. All right, and we want to find. What are the different? So basically, we can select a bunch of different towers to burn initially, yeah. and yeah. once we pick few towers that we are burning, we should ensure that burning those towers is ensuring all the towers get burnt eventually by the cascading effect. Exactly. Yes. And we have yeah. to tell there are how many ways of choosing the initial sequence of those towers, right? Correct. So, for example, wow. in this case, we have the first tower. If you burn it, then Job done. So first tower and you burn it, so that is one possibility. First tower and you don't burn the second tower, that is also perfectly fine. 
However, uh, if you don't burn any of the towers, this is not allowed. And right. If you burn just the uh, second tower and not the first, this is also not allowed. So you have to got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Awesome. This sounds like an incredible problem. Um, I'll just quickly, you know, um, think about it and get back to you. Sure. Take your time. <laughs> it's a tough one. That's it. Uh, I always do tough problems. All right. So let's see what do we have over here. We have that the ith tower is at xi. YI location. So this is the coordinates of the IS tower. And it also has some power range, which means that if you burn this tower, it will be seen by or it will be detected by all the towers which are within the radius P of I. All right. So we have three parameters, or you can say two parameters for every tower. One is their coordinate, and the other one is power. And the thing is, if there are two towers, so this is the IS tower, this is the JS tower. And if they are within the radius of PI, so if their distance between them is less than or equal to PI, so if you burn this, this will also get burned. Please note that this is not reversibly true. It might happen that burning ith tower is enough to also burn the jth tower because PI was really huge. But if P of J is really very, very small, then even if you burn the jth tower, it might happen that this is not getting burnt. So to sum up, we have n towers and we have to pick a subset of these n towers so that if we burn this subset, then we can ensure that all towers will be getting burnt. I'm not sure why do we have so much of destruction happening, but yeah, that's what we have to do. Now, we have to count the number of ways in which we can choose the subset. In general, we can have over two to the power n subsets and we have to count exactly how many of those subsets can we take and we can burn them and just burning them can ensure each and every tower is getting burned. All right. So I already have this intuition of using graphs over here. Why? It's simple. Even if I consider two towers, let's say this is the ith tower and this is the jth tower, I will draw an edge from i to j and I will do that if I feel that if I burn ith tower, then j will automatically get burnt. And I can find that easily by measuring the Euclidean distance between the i a j towers. And if that Euclidean distance between the towers is less than or equal to pi, then I insert a directed edge from i to j in my graph. So each edge in my graph will represent that if you burn the source vertex, the destination vertex will also get burnt. Now, if you build this graph, and you can do that easily in order n square time, because you can consider the source vertex and you can consider uh, the destination vertices, and they can have around n square pairs. And for each pair, you can very easily figure out whether you have to make an edge or not, as we have discussed. So in order n square time, so in order n square time, we have beautifully changed the problem into a graph problem. Now, what do we have? We have a bunch of nodes. We have a directed edge between those nodes. So we have a directed graph. And it might happen that there are cycles also present. It might or it might not happen. But the problem is we have a bunch of different graphs. It might happen that they are not connected. And now the question is, in such a graph, which like it can have multiple forests and each edge is directed, in such a graph, now the question becomes, in how many ways can you choose a subset of nodes such that if you pick them, you can traverse all the nodes? What do I mean by that? I am, what I mean is, if I perform DFS traversals from them, then each node should be visited. For example, um, this is a cycle, right? So if I pick any of these nodes in this graph, I'm talking about this. So this is a cycle. So if I pick any node from this, I know that all the other vertices can be traversed, which means that if I pick any of these towers, if I pick this one, this will burn this, this will burn this, this will burn this, this will burn this, and this is already burnt, right? So I know that for a cycle, if I pick any vertex, that whole cycle will be burning. But what I want to do is basically, I want to pick a subset of nodes so that if I perform DFS traversal on them, I can ensure that the complete tree it might have many forests. In this case, we are seeing two forests. One is this one and other is this one. But the question is basically pick those vertices 
really carefully so that if you perform DFS traversals from them, every node should be visited from that. And if we are ensuring that, then we are actually burning all the towers, right? So now, once we have converted this, we really do not care about PI. This is not having any weights. The graph is simply directed graph, and now we have to pick the vertices. One important uh, observation over here is basically, no matter you pick this one, this one, this one, this one, or this one, they are not enough. You always have to pick those vertices which are having no incoming edge. In this case, if you'll notice this one, or if you'll notice this one, if you leave any of these nodes, you can never burn the graph completely, right? So you have to make this careful observation that these two nodes or the nodes which are having zero incoming edges, right? Zero incoming edges. You always have to pick these nodes in your subset. And once you do them, here is the second observation. If you pick all such nodes, your graph will automatically get burned. And that can be proven by contradiction. So let's say you have chosen all the nodes which are having zero incoming edges, right? And now what I am proposing is that if you perform DFS traversal on these nodes, I guarantee you that all the nodes will be visited in the graph. And hence, I can say that the complete tower will be burned. Now to prove this, we can use simple contradiction. Let's say there is some node which was not visited in this DFS traversal. So that can only happen if that node is not having any incoming edge because as you can see when i am picking all these nodes i can start traversing and i will go through all the edges which are possible so all the edges will be traversed and hence all the nodes will be visited similarly for this forest i am picking this node because of which this node will be covered this node will be covered because i am traversing all the edges i will be traversing all the edges so if there is any node which is still not traversed it means it was not having any incoming edge and voila we have no such node because we have included all the nodes which are having zero incoming edges. We are already, you know, performing DFS traversals on them. We are already burning those towers. So now we have to choose the number of subsets. There are how many unique subsets are possible, right? So these are all, all always there in our answer. And now for the remaining nodes, for the remaining nodes, each node is having a choice. Either you pick it or you do not. It doesn't matter because all the nodes are automatically getting burnt now. So now the answer is for like every node, there is a contribution factor of two. Either you can pick it or you can simply ignore it. So that's why answer becomes two to the power of remaining nodes. What are the remaining nodes? Remaining nodes are the number of nodes minus all the nodes which are having zero incoming edges. All right. So I hope this makes sense. And this was a really beautiful problem that I love to solve. I am sure that Gaurav was not expecting me to solve this so easily. But yeah, I definitely loved it, especially, you know, when you are, uh, when you have left problem solving for quite a while and things come naturally to you, like thinking of this problem in terms of graph perspective and, you know, then coming up with this like directed graph and then solving this and making these observations. I really love doing that. And um, I have often seen candidates become really uncomfortable when they're not able to make progress. But come on, let's have some fun. And I feel that if you develop that mindset of having fun and trying to solve problems, you will also learn and you will also be able to show a better performance even in coding interviews. So with that, I hope this video was fun to watch and useful. Um, let's see what Gaurav has to say about this now. Damn, I need to start asking harder problems. Everly decomposition is next. But thanks, Rachit, for coming. Uh, thanks for making this possible. It's always fun to challenge you with the problem. Yeah, I really, I, yeah, I really loved, you know, solving these algorithm problems. I really enjoyed that a lot. It really sound like when I first heard the problem, I was like, damn, I should, I should not, you know, like I felt that I am out of practice now, but it was a phenomenal journey, you know, from, you know, solving this problem. I could revisit the old times of code forces and all those things, but yeah, I really enjoyed this problem. Thanks for asking. So guys, if you like this video, then be sure to hit the like button. Uh, do let us know what kind of problems you want us to solve in the comments and uh, yeah all sorts of suggestions are always always very very welcome thanks Rachit for coming again and for making this a special episode it's season 2 episode 1 see you uh, yeah thanks for watching guys <laughs> yeah so this was episode kya bole 8 ya 7 bole kya bole season 2 yeah so this was the season 2 starter episode of Rachit Challenges Gaurav I hope you liked it. If you 
I, I hope you like it. So this was the season starting episode of Lucky Challenges Gaurav. Uh, next. Nah. Ah.